What is going on guys? Welcome to another Hawaii episode. It is a, a gorgeous day here in Hawaii. Um, nothing on the first drop of the old crab trap, but we'll drop back down there. Usually we don't get anything on the first drop. The first drop is always unlucky. I can never think of a time actually that I actually caught something on the first drop. Anyway, the goal for today is to try to catch a keeper crab. Let's get this trap back down there, have a couple traps, and uh, yeah, let's try to get a good crab. So straight dead ahead, we have our second trap. It's been there about down there about 20 minutes. It also has a GoPro. Let's see if we got anything. Nothing. You know what we have here, guys? We have an old piece of chicken. Look at that. I threw an old piece of chicken in with this fish stuff because uh, I thought it might be good for bait, old chicken. So I'm gonna add that to it. Actually, before I add that to it, I'm gonna try to take this spike here. I don't have a knife, but the flesh of this fish is really soft. So I'm gonna just try poking it a few times to try to get more of those like juices released. There we go. So we have a piece of chicken and a fish. Looks kind of weird, but let's get this down there. So with fresh bait, I lowered it to the bottom with high hopes, two stinky pieces of bait on there, old chicken and a piece of fish. And it actually landed right in the middle of a weed patch. Now first, I want you guys to note the whale noises. That is not fake, I did not dub that in. I think when the camera's close to the bottom, it picks up the whale noises. It's like extra loud, because it, it like boomer, it, it boomerangs off the bottom, so to speak. And so you get some really cool whale noises that way. And we have our first um, curious fish of the day. This is a little puffer fish. And when I was younger, whenever we'd get around, uh, this is all pre-YouTube days when I was like a teenager and we first started fishing um, out away from shore. We'd always catch these little puffer fish whenever we'd get around the weed patches there. You see two of them coming up. And I guess they just live uh, in the little underwater forest there. And they're really funny looking. It looks like they have little beards. And I've never seen them get bigger than that. And apparently they're an aquarium. You can, they're aquarium fish. In fact, I think all puffer fish are kind of potential aquarium fish. But they don't get very big. And they're hilarious when you, when you catch them and you pull them up. They actually get the size about the size of a baseball when they inflate. And it's it, they're really, really funny looking then. So we had a few of those uh, swimming around. And then we have a different kind of puffer fish. This is called a white spotted toby. Um, T-O-B-Y. Toby like a, like a person. And uh, it's in the puffer fish family as well. And uh, he was checking out the line. They're very curious. Uh, in fact, there were a lot of them swimming around the trap uh, the whole time, the whole 20 minutes it was down there, checking it out. And so we had a good variety of little puffer fish hanging out. But um, all of them uh, stayed pretty close to the reeds there. They never, never really left it. This guy was about the most ambitious one. All of them stayed down in the reeds. And uh, you'll see why in a minute here. Um, I think they kind of, they're a little skittish. And for good reason, a lot of predators around. There is an uku. Uku, or gray snapper, as they're called on the mainland, are one of the main predators we actually catch in this area. In fact, out of all the game fish we catch, we catch more uku than anything. And he kind of circled around, coming in for a closer look. They can smell the bait and stuff, but... The trap seemed to scare it off, so uh, the, it didn't ever came in and actually took a chunk out of the bait, which kind of surprised me a little bit. So I moved it about 50 yards over, lowered it back down again, and here it is back at a clear, sandy area. And uh, the first customer of the day, finally, a little white crab. In fact, a really tiny white crab. He starts eating on the tail. He ate on the tail for about five minutes or so, which actually, like, surprised me. He was, I guess, eating. I don't know. It was just very strange to me. He actually ate off a good portion of the tail uh, when I pulled it up. And he's working his way around the bay. He mostly stayed behind us. So we didn't really get a good view. But pay attention to the corner of the screen here, the right-hand corner. So there's something moving. It's a big, fat puffer fish. I mean, enormous. And he wasn't even inflated. They only inflate when they're, like, threatened. 
And he's just cruising along like nothing's going on. Let's see a replay. Look how fat that pufferfish is. I wish he would have swam over to the trap. That would have been hysterical. I've never seen a pufferfish that wide. And then you hear that noise. That is a crab climbing on the GoPro. So don't ask me why he thought to jump on the GoPro. Um, you know, normally the GoPro actually kind of scares them away. That's why so many crabs are kind of skittish about it. But he was uh, messing with the GoPro, I guess. And he jumps in, but still not a big one. It's another white crab. And he mostly stayed behind the bait. And I pull him up. And he's in there. And you can see it's a little male crab. And uh, so he, they have to be four inches across, though, to keep. And they have to be male. You can't keep any of the females. And he hangs in there. Will I catch him? Barely hanging on. Boop, nope. I actually didn't even know that he was in there. I, I had no idea there was a crab, so he hit the edge of the paddle and dropped down. Lucky him. So I moved the crab trap over right by this anchored boat, and I thought this would be cool to get some cool views around this anchored boat. Maybe there'd be some big crabs hanging out around there. And uh, I lower it down, and there's the boat anchors that go all the way to the bottom, so usually creatures hanging out around the anchors, and you can see that school of fish. I thought this is so cool. The school of fish see the trap, and they can smell again. They can smell all the smells of that of that fish and the chicken, but mostly it's the fish that attracts them. So when it settles on the bottom, they become extremely curious to for and come in for a closer look. It's a school of uh, well, on the mainland we call them trevally, Jack trevally, but uh, in Hawaii they call them papil. And these are baby ones. They can actually get giant. You know, they can get like 100 pounds or whatever. But a school of small ones. And I really was hoping that they would come in for a bite. Like, that'd be cool if they just tore up the piece of bait there. But they're a little bit scared of the trap. And I'm wondering if I left the bait out for a little bit too long. So, like, rotted fish is really, really good for crabs. Uh, or kind of fish that's starting to turn is really good for crabs. But these... Uh, these fish only like fresh stuff. So they were really curious and they swam around it, but none of them actually swooped in and took a chunk out of the fish, which would have been cool. So I think next time I'm gonna try to get more uh, like fresher fish. And that would be really cool to like start a feeding frenzy uh, in a, you know, a fish in a crab trap. So I moved it one more time to a different spot. And in fact, I only moved about 20 yards over from, from that spot near some uh, rocks that were down there. Thought maybe it changed my luck. Uh, in fact, you can still see some of the uh, the papillo. Those are actually those fish that just passed are actually called leatherbacks, I believe. But there's a papillo, uh, so still some of them hanging around. But then you also had the uh, traditional reef fish that usually don't leave the reef; they don't swim around the sand. They stay close to their rocks and stuff. And uh, you can see them in the background there, chomping on all the rocks and everything. But none of those dudes swam over to it uh, to inspect. Again, fish, especially uh, the Hawaiian reef fish, like fresh. They like fresh fish, and so I think I'm going to switch it up next time, though, and put some fresh stuff in there instead of, uh, you know, this fish had been left out a little bit, and it was frozen for a long time. And I think if I do that, we'll actually have a good mix of crabs and fish coming into the trap, and uh, we get some cool views that way. You can see them all, you know, reef fish are the worst offenders when it comes to tearing up the reef. In fact, look at this goat fish in the back. They have, they have these whiskers that are real stiff that they used as, like, a prods, and they chomp down on the coral, they dig through the sand, and this dude's, they're like a little little plow underwater. They just stir up everything, and they just, they're trying to unearth um, little crabs and stuff like that. And this dude was going around, I hope I was hoping he'd come over to the trap and get in. See, I was using his whiskers, like plow up the bottom. Those are such a cool, they're so cool to watch underwater, especially when you're like snorkeling, you can get up close to them. Anyway, really cool stuff, but I pulled up the trap. Um, to, I kept pulling up with high hopes that we would uh, have something in it, but it wasn't meant to be this day. Well, my friends, I still have zero crabs, and I've dropped the traps collect probably together the two um, probably about 10 or 12 times, and nothing. So we're going to switch it up. We're going to go to plan B. A lot of cool views down there, but we're going to go to plan B. I'm going to shore fish. I actually had an invitation from a local here in Hawaii that I... Uh, 
that I know or that I met at the mall actually. He said, I like your channel. We started talking about fishing, of course. And then once you start talking about fishing, you can't stop talking about fishing. Anyway, he said, come join me and my friends. They're set up there like camping or something on a, on a beach down here. So I thought, if I can't catch any crabs, I'm gonna go down there. I'm just gonna join them and see what they're doing. They said they're Ulua fishing or Trevale fishing. So that would be cool to catch or witness. I don't know anything about like that, the big Trevale fishing from shore. It's called dunking here in Hawaii. And uh, so it'd be cool to learn about that. And so I'm gonna head over there, hang out with them. Let's see what let's see what happens. Cause this crabbing thing, we're we're done with this for now. <laughs> Watch, you know as soon as I throw this down there, crabs are gonna be all over it. Alright, my friends, we are on our way down to a spot. I'm really excited to see this box. I've never been here before. So new fishing spot, new guys to meet new locals, new friends new ways of fishing. All right, oops, there's a car coming. All right, I came to this spot. I, I saw so just driving and I thought, anyway, there's a, the reason why I stopped at this spot, so I'm not actually sure if this is where we're supposed to stop. But I see all those fishing rods, like look at that insane amount of fishing rods. And the guy said that one of the places is called Hole in the Wall. And I was like, is this Hole in the Wall? Well, in fact, there's a hole in the wall. Them? That might be them. They said they were going to camp overnight. Look at this spot. Oh, let's see. We have... Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is really cool. Oh. I see fishermen. We've got a model photo shoot going on down here. I've only met this subscriber once, so I can't remember. Who are you? Oh, wait, there he is. Oh. Hey! How's it going? Thanks for inviting me, man. Yeah. Good to see you. Wow, this is quite the spread. <laughs> like, are those you guys fishing rods too? Sweet, sweet. Wow, are you going to make, you gotta make a fire too? Oh, dude, this is sick. <laughs> Hello. What's your name? Nathan. Nathan. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Nice to meet you too. Colby. Colby. I might not remember if his name is Colby, I'm Nathan. Nate. Nate. Yeah. So Nate, Nathan, Colby. What's Jay. your Jay? Yeah. Cool. Wow. I didn't know the spot was down here. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Zorin. Zorin? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Zorin. Nice to meet you. Cool. I didn't even know this spot was down here. Is this a mostly like a local hangout kind of a thing? Yeah, I kind of yeah. know about it. Yeah, I didn't, I've driven by this a bunch of times, didn't know it was here. Yeah. Dude, I like this. Big fire, nice spread here. I'm not going to stay the night, but I thought I'd just come hang out with you yeah. guys for a while. Hopefully a little Lewis strikes while I'm down here. That'd be really cool to like witness that whole thing. So. Oh man, guys, this is so cool. And we got the tide coming in. Look at that big wave. Wow. I'm gonna stay out here for the beautiful sunset and uh, probably probably until it gets too dark for the cameras to see. But in the meantime, I mean, look at this view. Can't beat this. Unbelievable. I would really love to see a big Ulua strike one of these though. What do you have for bait on a lot of these? Uh, taco. Taco, okay. Yeah. Do you put like a whole tentacle on or a whole taco yeah, or? Like a whole tentacle. Okay. Yeah. Is that the bait bucket? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you have some crabs in there. And then, the, what, is the, what are the fish called? Uh, kupiti and a holy holy. A holy holy. A holy holy. You know guys, this is that one we ate in that first episode. We tried eating one of those. And then this is like a saltwater bluegill here. Anyway, you guys can see them down in there. Cool. Nice. But the main bait is taco. Do you guys usually pour the concrete like rod holders yourselves? Or do other people, do you actually, have you like poured these before or has somebody no, else come along me, with this? but I've known people who have. Too. Okay, that's really cool. So guys, they pour a concrete rod, rod holders right in the rocks. You just leave them here and any fisherman that comes along can use them. And they just have a ton of them all along the rocks there. Cool. 
The sun is just going down behind the horizon there. Oh man, I'm excited. So guys, this is Michael. This is the guy I was telling you about that I met in the mall. Check out his uh, channel in the description. I'll put a link to it. And he's gonna cast one of these baits out there. A slider rig. So guys, all it is is you have this big sinker here. It anchors to the bottom. And then we clip and they cast out there and it's supposed to hook on the rocks on purpose. That's why it has the wire. So you try to get, try to get snagged. And then uh, you just slide baits. You would clip baits on and attach to the line and slide them down. All the stuff that you saw in that bucket there and as well as the octopus. And that's basically what slide bait fishing is. Yeah, guys, it's kind of damp, so it's having a little bit of a hard time yeah. catching, but... Oh, right there, right there. There we go. Right. Now we're cooking. Oh. Nice. There we go. <laughs> there go. That's hot. Dude. That's hot. <laughs> that is max hot. <laughs> Oh, that's so warm. Alright guys, so Colby is the chef for the evening. He has a little uh, papillo here and uh, put some ace spice on it. Dude, I would I would really go crazy with it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like coat it real yeah, there we go. Now we're now we're that's the speed we're talking about. He's put some ace spice on it and uh, we're gonna fry it up. Guys, look at this spread they have here. So they've got they got the fish that they caught. And then they have a frying pan on a fryer. You got a boom box right here. You got a generator on the other side. Did you hear the generator? Wait, was that? What was it? I heard a bell. So, is somebody up there? Guys, we heard a bell. A miner right there by my backpack. Guys, we heard a bell, so we're gonna inspect. Hmm. Nothing's ringing right now, guys. All right, so back to the table. Uh, we'll uh, we'll keep listening for bites, guys. But we got a couple of papillo up here. Cook them in a little oil. Start it up. Got a little flame going under there. Eat up the oil. Sweet. <laughs> Fish on the bobby. Somebody just say. My eyes are. J Book? I love that sound. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Little papillo. Taste of the islands. Catch. <laughs> oh, nice. Guys, earlier today they caught some uh, trigger fish. This is that the pink tail trigger fish. If I may do the honors, yeah. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some seeds on this pink tail triggerfish guys. I like to go pretty crazy, like nice and cover it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Dude, that's a fat fish right there. There we go. Oh, J boy, I don't know if you like move your speaker. Oh, yeah, All right, we got finished fish here, guys. Uh oh, don't trust me. There we go. Oh, that looks good, man. Fresh fish. And what I like to do, guys, I made my seasoning not quite as salty as it should be, in my opinion, because some people complain about they're like on these no salt diets and all that stuff. So I always add a little bit of salt to my seasoning. All right, let me know what you think, man. But the seasoning good. Let me sample that for you. This has to be in a restaurant. What are we? <laughs> Tell me, this is the, the your seasoning. Yes, it is my seasoning. Right. The ace seasoning. It has like a Cajun spiciness to it. Breaking all of it right now. Oh, bro. Good. Oh, ask me. I gotta get your seasoning. <laughs> all right. Hey, I'll leave some with Michael. I'll leave some for you guys. What? Oh, yeah. That was pretty major. <laughs> Michael's gonna try some. 
With my marshmallow. With your, mar <laughs> your marshmallow. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, that's not the. Wait, wait, just a second. Before you take that bite. See, I didn't oh, prepare didn't that, that side. Where so, just a second. Right. So on my season, I think it needs just a little bit of salt. I made it. All these people are on all these no salt, no salt diets. So I didn't put as much as I wanted to in this, to make it more universal. There. Does that go better? Yeah. It, there we go. All right. Okay. Well, that seasoning is good. <laughs> That's good. Excellent. Right. Excellent. <laughs> Dude, I'll leave you. I'll leave you a bottle before I leave. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. It's kind of so, what? It's kind of really truly. Really? Guys, it, it has like a Kobe said, pink tail trigger fish is really chewy. That, that is a fat fish right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's a fat one too. This is another. Thing. Thing pull that one off. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, those trigger fish pull up, put up a fight too. Oh. Yeah. You know, if you could add it, I'll just hold the light. I guess we have to trigger a fish. So how much did I put? Dude, that? just just a light sprinkling. It doesn't have to be a lot because there's already a little bit of salt in the. Yeah, just a little bit more. There we go. All right, pink tail trigger fish. Dude, if you want to dig in first. No, all you. I've tried this before. You tried pink tail. Oh, okay, okay. I'll give the camera to you. Then. Hoggy is what you guys call him. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, it's like. Tough. It's tough, yeah. yeah. That's like, so interesting. Yeah, it's, you gotta chew a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be really chewy, I can already tell. <laughs> the flavor's good. Yeah. It's like steak or something. It's like really thick. Tender. Mm -hmm. It's like that's an so overcooked good. chicken. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's probably one of the Rob chewiest off. fish I've ever eaten, uh, right? Guys, this is delicious, but. Chewy. It's a cool combination. You're getting all fish flavor, but chewy. <laughs> nice. Guys, I'm not sure if we're on or not. Guy's reeling in his line. We might have something. Dude, are you on? Oh, dude. Oh, 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 oh it's a big puffer. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, dude, it's a spiky puffer fish. Whew. Oh. <laughs> oh, what the? Well, guys, we got a spiky puffer fish here. Whew. I thought it was bait. No, I just threw in bait, too. You just threw it on? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, there's the first catch of the evening. <laughs> Guys, he's so nah. spiky, we can't really grab him. He's taking his shoot. Maybe this wave will move. Oh, there you go. Wow. Are those poisonous? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think it's the white ones that are poisonous. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Well, <laughs> well, there's something, I guess. <laughs> well, guys. Did not catch anything besides the puffer fish uh, this evening, but uh, uh, Michael has, a, the guy who invited me has a GoPro, and uh, they're going to spend the night there, and I'm going to get back home. No fish, but um, they have a GoPro there, and we'll see what happens, if anything happens in the middle of the night. I'm going to go home, get some shut-eye, let, let them camp out on the beach, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, guys, I texted Michael this morning. Asked him if they caught anything. He said nothing. They didn't get anything last night. So it is winter time here in Hawaii. Can you tell? Can you tell? Wait, just a second. Yeah. Mmm. Icy cold winter out here. It's tough. These fish, you know, no wonder they're in lockjaw mode. It's just so the conditions are rough out here. So yeah, it makes sense. Fishing slow. Anyway, I, I really don't get that. You, you think like in a tropical place like this, fishing would be good all year round, at least to me, but it is Hawaii's winter and so things are slow. I've come here in the summer, in the spring before, and uh, you catch like three times as many fish, and especially the shore fishing. The shore fishing is so good. So what we'll have to do is I'm considering a trip to come back in the spring or summer when fishing's better, 
and uh, I'll probably meet up with those guys again. Don't forget to check out my first cast seasoning. I was surprised by their reaction. We did not stage that at all. I just asked, asked them how it was. So they loved it. I'm getting tons of positive reviews on this. We did work, uh, work hard to get it get it just right so anyway check out my seasoning i'll put a link to it at the very top of the description still a great time out here still so beautiful um we'll just have to come back come back and try again thank you guys so much for watching and huge shout out to michael and all his friends for letting me come down and join them uh, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one